Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a massive one for the boys. Born in Thunder Bay, Ontario, this person was the backbone of the Sudbury Wolves during their historic 06-07 run. He had 123 points in 236 games in his OHL career and went on to be drafted 12th overall in the first round of the 2005 NHL draft. Not to mention, he was the OHL playoffs MVP that year and won back-to-back World Jays. Hey, how are you? To date, he has over 1,000 games played with 290 points and is currently a member of the Florida Panthers. Please welcome Mark Stahl to the BTB Podcast. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. We're excited for this one, uh, Mark. So when when's the last time you've actually been in uh, in Sudbury? And, and when you're here, what, what are the go-to stops for you? Uh, so the last time I was there, I think it was, had to have been three years ago now. It was Nick Foligno's uh, charity mm-hmm. uh, game I right. played in, so I came up for that for a few days. Um, awesome. uh, so that was a uh, yeah a trip down memory lane already, just to go <laughs> back to the old building and stuff. But it was it was a lot of fun. He did a really good job with the uh, with the event, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, Go to spots probably. I mean, I would. I, I didn't really hit. We. I was. We stayed out at Nick's place on the lake, so we weren't really out and about in the city too much. But um, I would have loved to have gone to like Gonga's Grill or. I don't oh, think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Jack's is still a place. I think that that was by the mall. It's still it, there, yeah. It's, it's still, still there. there. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hit that place out quite a bit too uh, for breakfast. Um, but yeah, and then uh, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Awesome. Good stuff. And like you said, you, you'll be returning to the old uh, barn next week and get your, your number retired. A big congrats, obviously. H- how did you find out and, and how did it all go down? Uh, uh, Rob, uh, I guess the GM of, uh, of Sudbury called me probably the end of August, maybe around maybe the end of September, just before camp started. Um, and uh, told me what they wanted to do. And uh, something you're definitely not really thinking about or ready for or not something mm-hmm. that's on your mind ever so it was a it was kind of a, a kind of a shocking call but um kind of what you know once um once he explained what they wanted to do and stuff like that is it, it got to be pretty exciting and uh, pretty humbled by the honor um to to have that um happening for a, for an organization that's been around as long as they have and the amount of history that they have and I really enjoyed my time there. So um, I was, uh, I was pretty pumped. Awesome. That's such a super cool moment too. Um, what we usually like to do, Mark, is like take it all the way back with our guests too, to the start of kind of hockey. So how was minor hockey in kind of Thunder Bay? And and um, obviously it's no secret kind of growing up, uh, kind of playing around kind of your three brothers as well in Thunder Bay. Do you ever have a chance all for you to play on the same team too, kind of going through uh, the Thunder Bay system? Uh, no, we never, never all ended up on the same team. I played with Jordan, I think a couple times. I think that was the only really overlap. Um, okay. so, but I mean, we played together on the outdoor yeah. ice. Yeah. <laughs> so we were always, always playing with each other. I mean, that, I mean, my memory of, of, of hockey is, is mostly that. I mean, I remember the going down to tournaments in Toronto. Yeah. That was a big moment for any kid from Thunder Bay getting on a plane and, and going yeah. to the top. Yeah. That was like a huge deal for us. So uh like that was around 12, 13 years old and started to get to do that. It was a lot of fun. But even before that, just playing with my cousins, my buddies playing outside. Did a lot of a lot of skating outside, just playing around, not really doing drills or anything, but just playing two and two, one on one, hit the post, all that kind of fun stuff. But as your kid. Um and it just kind of grew from there. Awesome, awesome. yeah. And and you mentioned Toronto and, and actually Th- Thunder Bay's in, in the GTHL. Now, I'm not sure what the loop was like for you, but what do you think about Thunder Bay mo- moving to the GTHL? I think it's great. I mean, I think it, um, it exposes kids to, to higher level of hockey uh, earlier on. And, and I think um, uh, I think it's positive for, for the city of Thunder Bay to, to be involved. So uh, I'm not sure that Toronto parents are probably too pumped to be ripping up the Thunder Bay <laughs> of the year. I'm not sure what that schedule is like for them, but uh, uh, no, I think it's, uh, it's great to, to, I mean, cause we, I mean, we always went, when I was, when I was playing, we went down there and played tournaments and we were always very mm-hmm. competitive and, and it was always a lot of fun. So um, no, I think that's good. Yeah. Awesome. Now let's take, take us back to your draft year too, the OHL. You go second overall um, and playing in the King system too. So how'd you find out where you were going? How was the lead up? like going through that year too. 
Um, and ultimately when the wolves uh, called your name, kind of what was their feeling like? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it was, it was very, uh, I think I was like, just got off the ice when the draft was going on. Um, <laughs> and I think one of my teammates said it to me, like, Hey, you went to, like, it was like, it was very like, uh, was it like this big, like crazy moment? Or like that. I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. So that'd be cool. And then like dad walks in, he's like, I was like, all right. Let's go. <laughs> I kind of had a feeling before I, I had talked to some scouts and stuff and, um, but, um, yeah, it wasn't like this a uh, huge, uh, huge event for us at the time. I mean, I mean, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of funny that way, but, um, and it was like our second time going through it. So Eric, when Eric went through it, it was like, we had, like, I had no idea what the OHL even was. Like he was, yeah, he had drafted yeah. the OHL and I was like, I think I was, 13 12 13 and i was like what's that i mean i didn't know what it was so yeah wow. um and then having to watch eric and peterborough and i'm and going like wow this is really cool as a kid yeah. you're like this is like yeah. this, it's like the pros you know when you're <laughs> yeah. this is great so and then i got really excited uh about the opportunity to, to maybe play in that league and then yeah when i found out i was going to Sudbury, I was, I was really excited i mean um for me from Thunder Bay, it's, you know, very similar in, in, um, in towns, sit in size and, and people just good, good working hard class people that, uh, and it was a smooth transition for me. So I'm pumped. Yeah, no doubt. And, and during your time, obviously in Sudbury, Mike Felino was your coach the, the whole way through. And when we had Nick on, he had a great story about Mark, uh, Mike coming down the bench, giving him the squeeze on the squeeze on the neck. How was, how was Mike, uh, as a coach, was he able to get the, the boys fired up or what? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I knew how good I had it until after like, mm -hmm. as, as far as having someone with, his type of resume, his experience, his passion for the game. So at the time, yeah, I'm just like, oh, it's, you know, it's Nick's dad and he's going to you know, be hard on us. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and Nick, Nick's going to mouth off to him. He's going to bag skate us because he's mad at his kid, uh, <laughs> but uh, which happened a couple of times. <laughs> um, but no, it was awesome. He was, he was great. Great for me. Great for, to, to kind of start out in my career. And I learned a ton from him um so yeah i was very fortunate to, to have him as my coach that's awesome and uh, obviously in your first few years of Sudbury, you had almost immediate impact too you made the uh the rookie team uh the ohl rookie team that first year um and you guys also made the playoffs the the first few years before that kind of that big run in 06 07 going into that season though what were kind of the expectations of the group too were you thinking long playoff run or were you thinking just kind of go through the year and see what happens the year we went to the finals? Yeah, the year you guys went to the finals. Yeah, I mean, I I think I mean I think we kind of limped in. I think we were like eight seed. Um I remember I think I remember, I remember having a conversation with Mike. I think he had I think he like talked to me and Nick and I think Adam McQuaid and John Diverse and a couple of the, the the guys on their team and he was kind of like, Do you guys want me to add or do you want me to trade you? Cause he's like, you, you, you do one or the other. And if you guys are serious about this thing, I'll add some guys. If not, you know, we'll, you know, go from there. And then we were all like, Oh, let's, let's go. Let's, let's try to do this thing. And then as soon as we started, we added a couple, a couple of good players. Um, got a, I think Sebastian Dom, who just like went hamburglar on us. He just yeah. like, like, he went on an absolute tear. So uh, which was unreal. And and then, yeah, things just started to kind of click near the end and we got real confident before we started the, the playoffs and we knew we were going to be a tough out and then we just started to run and it was a, it was a ton of fun. Yeah, no doubt. You mentioned, you mentioned Sebastian Dam who had a hell of a playoffs. Like, like you mentioned, did you guys ever give him a hard time for the black Pats? I, I only gave him confidence because that's, <laughs> he, was, he was not getting chirped. He was, he was, he was, he was he could do whatever he wanted to do. He was on fire, and no one was going to mess with that. So no, we didn't, uh, we didn't mess with him too much. We just wanted to stop the clock, and he was doing a good job of that for us. No doubt, that's awesome. And I mean, right at the start of the run, you guys, you guys play Mississauga and, and beat him four one. And hockey DB, fun fact for for you, um, you guys played them the first game of the year, lost ten four, and then you beat them four one uh, in the series. So how did you feel uh, again through that series pretty quickly? Yeah, that's. I mean, we were sure underdogs going into that. So yeah. I think we went into Mississauga and we just 
we outplayed them. I, I don't know. I don't know if we won the first game or the second or both, but we we dominated them. And from that point, it just kind of we were like, oh, we we can do this. We we were pretty good, and and then our confidence started to grow as a team. And um, you know, in junior, sometimes guys you get guys get homesick. Guys get you know guys get you're like ah, it's playoffs, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I think for me as a 19 year old kind of knowing this was my, you know, it was it for me. I, I wasn't going to come back. And, um, I want to make sure everyone understood like how special it could be. It's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's only a junior. You only get to play junior for a few years and why not, you know, um, give it your best effort and, and, and put everything you have into it. And, um, like a lot of our team did that and probably why we were able to do what we did. Yeah, no doubt, and, and and like you said, you guys kind of steamrolled right into to the next series, bury the the number one squad. I think they finished thirty points ahead of uh, you guys that year, the number one squad, <laughs> and you sweep them clean. I mean, what what was it like just t- taking it to Barry, beating them four zero, and and away you go off uh, to to these finals? Yeah, like you said, just the I think. They had like Brian Little. I remember. I remember yeah. just being like, "I got it. This guy can't score." I that was like my. <laughs> yeah. My, the, he he was he was their best player, and he was a he was a driver of the team. So you know, every every chance I had, obviously every shift I was trying to be out there against him and, and doing my job, and then that's yeah. what I kind of remember that series and it being a really tough tough four games. But yeah, and then we swept them and got. Few more days in, in the road to party for, with the boys and, and, and <laughs> yeah. the next round. That's unreal. I love that's it. That's awesome. And then we let's go off to the Belleville series. And I mean, like, let's almost just skip right to game six and the big triple overtime game. Um, what was it like through that game? Obviously, you played a ton through it. Um, but just what was that feeling finally seeing Matt find the back of the net and then sending you guys to off to the finals? Yeah, it was it was awesome. Um yeah, I think if I remember correctly, he was coming off the left side. It was a power play, maybe. It was that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah came Too bad. Side, tucked it under yeah. the bar, right? Like it yeah. off the kind of like near the goal line. Then went in the right. corner. Yeah, yeah. So like that, like that, that memory is like this is burning in my head because it's just it was <laughs> such a huge goal, and the place just went uh, crazy. And uh, yeah, and we were off the final, so it was uh, it was a big moment. It was it was definitely a lot of fun. Actually, the other, the other thing I remember about that series too is my brother scored in overtime. I think that's right. Game, I don't know what it was. It was in in Belleville, and it was like I think I took a backhand from the blue line, like made it to the net. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> he buried the rebound double, and it was like and this was in overtime too. And uh, something that we always still talk about, which is it was always it was always a ton of fun. That's unreal. Yeah, it's it's funny that it's like ingrained in your brain too. Because we were talking before the interview, and and um, I was actually at that game too. And we talk about Sudbury moments as as two Sudbury guys that have always just been around OHL hockey. Like that's it's ingrained in in my brain too. Just like sitting there, finally seeing the puck on the net, and just standing yeah. up. And I mean, yeah. I think it was like fifty seven hundred people. In the Sudbury Arena, which is still yeah, must be some yeah. sort of record. Like probably, I just remember being so probably loud. illegal, probably like way <laughs> yeah. over way over code or something. Yeah. yeah. What what kind of just stand on the arena for a second? Like, what kind of impact did that have on you guys as the players? Like, just seeing like as you guys got deeper and deeper in that run, the 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 kind of the crowd would erupt. Like, how how much of an impact did it have for you guys on uh, on the ice? Yeah, I mean, well, the community is, has when I was there, I'd always supported the team and, um, you ever, they, you know, you always, the people that are in the restaurants or, or, or know you, the billet families are always very supportive of the wolves. And, um, that run, it kind of showed, I mean, we had like pep rally going into the finals. It was like yeah. city hall was like packed. Like it was yeah. great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's unreal. And like, and you could tell you go into the rink and uh, people were just excited and, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it was a big deal. I mean, we wanted to to keep that keep that going because, um, you know, it doesn't happen all the time. So I mean, you got you got to take advantage of it and, and and try to finish the job. Yeah, and and you nailed it around the head. Uh, that doesn't happen all the time. Hasn't happened since uh, here in Suns. We're yeah, dying. We're dying for another run. We're oh, dying no. for another run. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but but when you guys played Plymouth, actually uh, another one. I was at the Plymouth game when when Donati scored the OT winner at home. Uh, yeah. Kind of tr- trickled through Neuvert. Do you remember that one? And and just maybe take us through that series with Plymouth. Yeah, I do remember that. I mean, we were. I mean, there was a they were a bit of a different animal. Obviously, it was, they were a, a very good team, and we um, we were kind of right there. I just I think I think. Um, for me, I think uh, from what I remember from it is when I mean, we played really hard and we was a, we had a tough time in their building. They were very good um, in in their building, and um, but just it was like kind of well, near the end. With so this is so devastating because you're like you know it's yeah. like you're such on a magical run. You think like we're gonna we're gonna win, and uh, when it doesn't happen, it was it was pretty heartbreaking. You put a lot okay. into it, and um, but yeah, they were a good team. That yeah, like James Neal and Sestito and they had a good, really good goaltender. Um, but uh, it wasn't meant to be, but I mean, yeah, we were um we were right there. I mean, it was it was too bad, but too bad we fell short. No, for sure. And and absolutely like no matter what, the, the memories are, are 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 unbelievable. We'll never forget it. And I mean, you guys played 10 overtime games that whole run, which is like insane. Probably yeah. the most hockey you might have played in your life. I don't know if you can att- yeah. attest to that in one year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, like, were there any good moments, like, in the intermissions during those OTs, any, like, big speeches or anything from, from the guys that you remember? I mean, not specifically, no. I I, um, I do – I just – I do remember being very tired. <laughs> being very, very tired. Um, but no, I mean, Mike, Mike was, Mike was awesome. He was, he had the, so much experience in those situations and, in 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 a playoff run, uh, he had us, I think we watched the secret. It was like, a, it was like power, positive thinking kind of video. It's kind of like, <laughs> all like, you know, you guys was basically just getting us to believe, to believe it. And, and That's so cool. we did, we believed it. We were, we were all in and, um, but yeah, just that. I mean, the bus rides, and I think we took a plane. I think we chartered a plane from Sudbury to, to Plymouth, which That's was a big yeah. deal. Which That's is awesome. like, yeah, the boys were pumped. So <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah it's unreal. unreal. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, talk about uh, something that we will always talk about in the community here is like the green jersey and how, like, when most people now, especially the young kids, like look at the wolves. Like you always think of like the blue, the gray, the white, and that was almost you know symbolic for the years that you're in. So I don't know if you ever you played with the green jersey, but what were your thoughts as like a player? Did you guys ever talk about maybe getting the green jersey back? I know it's a, a topic of conversation with the the current team today that they really want to wear the green jersey um, as well. But do you have any big thoughts on that too? You had the Wolves, the gray one with the Wolves kind of uh, diagonally, yeah. which is a pre- pretty sweet uh, uh, jersey too. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think the – even the one – I mean, the ones I wore, I love. I think they're just like – it's like a classic yep. logo look yeah. like it's a great logo i think it's a very it's like one of the top ones in, in in the ohl i think the green i did i do remember like seeing pictures of it and i mean yeah if they did like a like the nhl does like a reverse retro night or something they throw those out there something like that would be great yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. i i think i think the green sharp too i mean I, I, either way like that it's just it's just just history it's just like you just you see it and it's just like it just seems historic it, they're yeah both both great jerseys yeah, no, you're absolutely absolutely right. Um, a couple questions before we uh, we let you go here and, and into our fast five. Um, obviously the old barn's still around, and with the old barn is uh, is the stuffed wolf. What was the conversation maybe around the league with with the stuffed wolf? Did you guys like it and and uh, the whole aura around it? Actually, got like a documentary on sports and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, everyone, that's like the first thing. People say, like, even if they hadn't played junior or played in Sudbury, they're like, isn't that the place with the wolf? Like, that comes down? I'm like, yeah, that's that's it. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone knows about it. No, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, every visiting team hates it because it's, like, kind of just, like, a mocking <laughs> thing right in your face. Yeah. You get scored on. You got to watch this thing creak out in front of you. Like, um, so, no, I think it's, like, a, a it's a very cool piece of history and something that uh, I think it just, just adds to, like, the wolves, the junior experience, the whole thing is just, it just uh, ties it all together. I think it's great. For sure. For sure. Um, And 
do you guys keep in touch? Do you keep in touch with many guys from from that team, or or through your time in in Sudbury? I know Stortz played, I think, the year before and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I got a few uh, a few guys that um, I keep in contact with. Obviously, Nick's an easy one. Um, yeah, we get to see him every once in a while um, uh, throughout our travels. And Adam McQuay that I kept in contact with, obviously, in in his time in Boston and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm actually staying at my roommate's. Uh, I was roommate with uh, Thomas Sample for a couple of years in Sudbury. And I'm staying in his mm-hmm. house Thursday night, the night before uh, That's awesome. um, the Jersey retirement. So yeah, and then there's um, there's some guys that um, I mean, when you when you play junior hockey, you don't realize it at the time, but you, you start to make friendships that they ain't going away. And those That's are right. you know, yeah. some some people that uh, are, are great friends of mine to this day. So um, um, yeah, it's been. Uh, a great group of guys, so it was, it was a fun time. For sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, all right, Mark, before before we let you go, we have a segment we like to do here. It's called Fast Five. So it's five rapid-fire questions. Whatever comes to the top of your head, let it rip. So we'll send it off to uh, Roberto here. Okay, we're starting off with maybe the toughest question um, in the Fast Five that we ever ask. Favorite teammate of all time? <laughs> <laughs> That is actually insanely hard. That's, <laughs> I got to pick one. Yeah, we can. And maybe to narrow it down, we can do favorite teammate of like your junior career with the Wolves. Jared, Jared Stahl. Okay. Easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can't miss that one. Yeah. yeah <laughs> if, if not, Christmas dinner might be a little different. I played with, well, I played with Eric now and I, played with, I haven't played with Jordan yet. Well, okay. only when I, was, when I was in 12. So, yeah. I'll still take yeah. Jared for Eric, though. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, favorite genre of music? Uh, probably rock, or awesome. yeah, Muffin and Sons like that. I tell you, like that. Yeah. Uh, favorite stick you ever used? Oh, uh, Easton Z Bubble. Oh, oh the Z Bubble <laughs> classic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Um. Favorite moment from the 06 07, the run to the finals, not including the uh, the triple overtime goal. It had to be my brother's overtime goal in Belgium. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely uh, definitely a lot of fun for us. That's awesome. And then, last but not least, uh, your fr- uh, it's kind of a two parter. So, your favorite Sudbury restaurant and your favorite Thunder Bay restaurant. Sudbury restaurant. Well, I ate every pregame meal at Cortina's. Is that place still there? Is that oh, yeah. all around? Oh yeah, <laughs> thriving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So Cortina's would be because I ate it every Friday and Saturday. <laughs> That's Friday. Awesome. Um, and Thunder Bay restaurant. Oh, oh, Santorelli's. Okay, done. Awesome. Love it. It's, just, awesome. it's, a, it's a husky truck stop, but they got great pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. We'll have to we'll have to mark that when uh, when we if we ever up, get up there to, right. to TBA. Love that. Awesome. Um. Well, thanks a lot, Mark, uh, for coming on. Actually, you know, we should reach out um, to Jared, too. I got a great story about him jumping into the glass at the Sudbury Arena and shattering it after uh. the goal. It's an unreal story. <laughs> um, but, uh, but again, thanks so much for uh, for giving your time to us and, and chatting about uh, the historic run, and uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. But, again, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect.